the Chris's Clock Shop. So today in this video I'm going to show you how to install all the front works and the back works on your Westminster chime movement. Oh, and there it goes. In this video I'm going to show you how to properly uh, sequence your 4-4 cam, your stop cam, so that you're chiming uh, correctly and it's striking correctly. And we'll go through all the details on how to do that. All right? So here I've got my movement. It's assembled and I oiled it. And uh, all I've got here are the gears. Okay? Everything moves nice and smoothly. All right? And now what I need to do is install the front works and the back works so that it strikes and chimes properly. So that's what I'm going to show you here. Over here, I've got all the parts that I need, and I'll just walk you through it. Okay, let's go. This wishbone piece here is the first piece we're going to install. It goes on this post right here. It just slides on, and then it's held in place with an E-clip. Okay, so this piece rides on that cannon pinion. It's got four star pointed lobes. Three of them are one height and one is higher than the rest, which indicates the lift for the hour. Now I secure it in place with my E-clip. Moving on to the second piece, these are your dropping levers that go into your stop cam and your 4-4 cam. And different clocks have different styles. Some have a rod that goes through the movement. This one just sits on a post as shown here. The smaller drop lever is on top of that longer one and this is the one that helps to self-correct the clock for the hour and both of these pieces are held in place with an e-clip now i'm putting the minute wheel or the intermediate wheel on but actually i don't need it on at this point i put it on prematurely in this video but here I'm illustrating how the lifting action from the wishbone piece moves the drop levers. And they uh, it'll lift higher at the hour. See here, it's lifting higher than anywhere else. See, that didn't lift as high. And I want to position it this high. so that it's just lifted for the it's hour. Right high. here for the hour. Wow. Boom. Now I'm going to install the gathering pellet. I'm just going to loosely place it on the shaft of the third wheel on the strike train, sticking out of the movement here. So I'm going to place it on there loosely so I can move it easily. Now when I look inside the movement, I got my warning wheel there. That warning wheel needs to be at top dead center when the strike has completed its action. There's a little pin in there on the warning wheel and it needs to be at the 12 o'clock position or top dead center. When the striking arm here has finished being lifted by the star wheel and drops. So I'm going to install the spring that causes that lift arbor to snap back after the lifting action. The spring is attached to a post and then hooks on to the arbor of the strike lift. Okay, now, so that lifting arm or arbor 
it's going to snap back when I move the star wheel. So as I spin the gears, I want to have it so that the star wheel lifts that um, arbor and it drops. And right after it drops, that's when I want to hold it into position and position my warning wheel at top dead center. And now I can position the gathering pallet and secure it there. And I want the gathering pallet to be rotated so that it's upright as shown here. That's exactly the position I want it when the warning wheel is at top dead center and the strike has just dropped after the star wheel lifted it. And then what I'm going to do is secure it tightly by hand and then give it a couple quick taps to secure it in place with a good press fit. Now I don't want to tap too hard and push the bushing out. That's about all it takes. Okay, now I'm going to install the stop cam. There is a ridge on the stop cam that contacts the drop levers that we installed earlier. And when it is flush against the drop levers, that warning wheel on the chime side has to be at top dead center. So I'm holding the warning wheel at top dead center while I press that stop cam in. And here, those arms are against that flat ridge on the stop cam. And then when it's in that position, I want to tighten it down. Now this particular stop cam is tightened down with an Allen key. Many times it requires a flathead screwdriver. Now this may be difficult to see, but my left hand is securing the stop cam tight against those drop levers while I hold the warning wheel such that the pin in the warning wheel is at top dead center. And I'm just going to snugly tighten the screw, the Allen screw, set screw, on this side. There's another one on the other side. And I just want it snug, and then I'll make the other side snug so that it doesn't move when I tighten it down. But I want this very tight so that it doesn't move while the clock is running. Okay, now that I've tightened it down real good, I'm going to spin it so it's tight against those drop levers, and I'm just going to visually check to make sure my warning wheel is at top dead center and it didn't move while I was tightening down those. All right, so now I'm ready to install my 4-4 cam. <clears throat> it goes on the post right next to my stop cam. And uh, the smaller drop lever rides on the back of it. The pin that comes out of that arm drops into the slots that are on the front of this cam. There's four of them, one for each quarter hour. Now at the three quarter hour, on the back of the cam is an additional drop so that, that the lifting or the drop lever will actually fall further at the three quarter hour. See here on the back? Okay, it got that groove in it. So that drop lever is going to drop further down into that groove at the three quarter hour. That way, the clock will only lift high enough to get it out of that groove at the hour. And that's how this clock self adjusts itself for the hour if the chime sequence gets off, like when you change the time of the clock, for example.
Okay, guys. So I'm going to put my 4-4 wheel on. In the... So this is the drop for the... <clears throat> after the hour. So this is the drop after the quarter hour. This is the drop after the half hour. And this is the drop after the three-quarter hour. So that's where I want to install <clears throat> my 4-4 cam with my stop cam locked into position because the tooth that extends from this arm behind the cam is in its lowest position. And I want to make sure that this 4-4 wheel is there. Okay, <clears throat> but also it's not um, riding And I'll just make it a little snug. And I want to make sure, all right, that this pin here is in the center of the drop. So with just a little bit snug, I'm going to rotate this thing a hair. See, just like that. Make sure it's in the drop in the center. Make this other side snug. All right, and then after it's snug on both sides, that's when I'll tighten this down. And while I was doing that, okay, with my left finger, I was holding the gear up here uh, forward. See, I can see me my finger moving the warning wheel right here. So I'm going to move it forward until it stops, which means it's locked here. And I keep it in that position while I tighten this down so that nothing moves from the position I put it in. All right. Okay, so now my 4-4 wheel and my stop cam are correctly installed for the chime sequence. Now, I put my minute wheel on. And I'm going to put this, um, this is the uh, drop lever. that counts the, that gets gathered up in the rack. All right, so here's my snail. Put it on the center shaft. And I want to put the rack on. Okay, the rack goes here. And the rack will sit on this arm here. And when I release it, the rack drops. It contacts the snail. Now here, okay, I want to position the snail on the minute wheel. All right, remember? Okay, I'm going to back up for a second. I'm going to take the rack off and the snail off. So this center shaft, I want to rotate it around one, two, three. Okay, so now it's lifting higher for the hour. So I want it in that position where it just drops after the highest lobe on this cannon pinion. Then I want to put my snail on such that the rack, when it drops, okay, when the rack drops, it's in the 11 o'clock slot. Here's 12, here's 11. So right now it's in the 10. So I want to move this uh, snail over a gear tooth. 
now it's in the 11 o'clock slot. Okay. And now I'm going to use Eclipse to secure my rack. And then another Eclipse. this piece all right and now I'm actually going to rotate my minute wheel Whoop. I don't want my rack getting caught behind my snail I'm going to rotate this around so I've got space to put on the washer And the washer okay, it goes on that arbor. And it's secured with an E-clip. It's just easier for me to install it with the uh, rack out of the way. So there you have it, the front works installed. Now on um, a less modern movement, okay, this modern movement has a weight here that causes this to drop. But on an older clock, it'll actually have a spring that goes from here from here to a post and that's what pulls it back and drops in the rack all right so now i'm going to install on the back the chimes on this side strike on this side then I'll install my uh, verge and then I'll show you how to adjust the music roll so that it chimes correctly okay so here's the strike hammers which go here it's held in position by this washer with a set screw And basically, when I install this, I want to make sure my lifting arbor is fully uh, in its down resting position. And the strike hammers, oops, let's do that again. So now I want to install my striking hammers when this is in its down position after it just finished dropping. I'm going to put my washer on the shaft here. I'm going to slide this on the arbor. I'm going to hold this against that. And I want my hammers to be pretty much perpendicular okay, when this is in the down position. And then I'm going to tighten down my set screw. And okay, now I'm going to install um, the chime roll and hammers. First thing I'm going to do is I'm going to put this uh, this gear on the arbor of that wheel then I'm going to put my music roll in now this is a triple chime and uh, you this piece okay this uh, little um, slot is actually going to be 
interfacing with this rod on the hammers. And this elbow or boomerang piece here This piece right here is going to be in this slot of the music roll, which is what will lift it into different positions. So I want to lift this up, put it in that slot. Oops. So, now you'll see here, this plastic piece fell when I was doing that, okay, and this actually, I need to lift this back out and put this back underneath this rod here. I'm going to put my music roll back into position. Now, I'm going to put my hammers on. I'm going to, so you can see this. This sometimes is a pain. But you want uh, this rod is going to be behind these silver springs here. And this front rod, front rod, it's going to be inside that uh, opening slot on that piece that mu moves the music roll. And might take some practice to get it right. It's easy to get jammed. I am right now. I'm going to put the nut here. Okay. Another nut. Up posts. Now 
add some tape. Okay. <clears throat> then I want to make sure that each one of these springs is attached. Like so. Okay. Now I want to put I want to oil the music roll here and on the other side and then I want to mute uh, oil each of the hammers Oops. Okay. Now I'm going to rotate this around. I have to position this wheel here so that the uh, music roll will um, slide back and forth it's in the right position so I'm just gonna um, I'm gonna put the music roll in its maximum position here and make sure okay so right now the music roll is in its maximum position as indicated here by this plastic piece and that means that's the furthest this music roll is going to go out and so I want to make sure this gear here is contacting the end of the music roll see there so I'm going to slide this out of here just like that and then I'm just going to make this snug I'm not going to tighten it down I'll tighten it down after I get it in the rack and I'm making my final adjustment to the position of these hammers which I'll show you but now all we have to do is put on the verge and then put it in the rack okay so I'm going to put on the post on the front it's held in position by two screws I'm just going to put this in snug but so that this is still free to move a little bit okay and then I'm going to put the back I'm going to put the uh, yep I'm going to put the uh, verge in like so I'm going to put this piece on. On the post here. Okay. 
and then it's held in position by two screws. Okay, and just put that in lightly. I'm gonna make sure I don't tighten this down with the pivot out of the hole. Bend that pivot or break it. And then with it still loose, I wanna make sure my pivot is in the hole. All right. Make sure that my escapement is properly located and then tighten down those screws. And I'll tighten down the two screws on the front that were still loose. And voila! Now I'm going to put the chains on the pendulum leader and throw it in the rack, and I'll show you how to adjust the chime hammers. Okay, guys, so now I got it in the rack. It's taken nice and well. Now I need to adjust the music roll so that the chiming sequence is correct in all three settings. So I'm going to go through on the quarter hour. Okay, so that's obviously wrong. And what I want to do is, all right, so this wheel right here, I didn't tighten super tight on the shaft, which will allow me to be able to turn the music roll fairly easily. Okay. Now what I want to do is set this on Westminster, which is usually the downmost position. The reason why I do that is it's just easier to set the chime for Westminster. So now I'm going to go to the half hour with my hand over here. We're going to watch and see what it does. Now I'm going to go to three quarter hours and notice the last, the last three notes of three quarter hour, I know should be the same first four notes on the quarter hour of Westminster. So now right now in this position, it should have stricken one, two, three, four. Okay, that's where it should have been. I'm gonna go to the hour. And it should play 16 notes completely with no hammers left in the air. All right, and it did just that. And as you can see, my strike hammers are lifting and dropping. And because I set it on properly, it's in the down position after the strike completed. So now I know my Westminster chime is in the correct sequence. So now what I want to do is move my hammer to the next, or my lever to the next music but as you can see it's loose it didn't actually move the music wheel but the reason for that is because it's slightly out of position so i'm going to move it a hair forward and you saw how it moved right so now it's in that next slot so when i go to quarter hour with my hand i'm going to watch the hammers go and there's one sticking up in the air. So guess what? 
I have to advance my music roll just a hair until that drops. Now I'm going to go to the half hour. And there's a hammer sticking in the air. So I'm going to advance the music roll hair. I'm going to do that for the three quarter hour. Good. Now I'm going to go to the hour. Make sure that there's no hammers left in the air. Now, if you go too far with the music roll when you're doing this adjustment, one of the hammers will lift during warning. And then you've got it too far. You have to redo it. So now it looks like I've got the uh, chime sequence for Westminster and Whittier. And now we're going to do St. Michael. So I'm going to lift the uh, lever up one, and you saw how the music roll popped into place. So that's a sign that it's now in the right position. But we still may have to do a few minor adjustments on this third chime. So it should play the whole sequence, and it does. Oh, I thought maybe one of those hammers was going to stay up. And I'm going to advance the music roll just a hair. This is the final test. As long as all the hammers strike completely, then I know my music roll is properly adjusted. The chime sequence is correct for all three chimes. And it is. And now, the only thing left to do is, on this wheel, I need to tighten that set screw really tight so the chime roll doesn't move out of position. And then we're in business and everything is working properly. So I hope you guys could follow what I was doing there and it made sense. If you have any questions, uh, send me a message and I'll do my best to answer them. So thanks for watching. So here's a quick tip. If you notice on the left, the strike weight is not going down evenly with the chime and time weight. And that's an indication that the snail was improperly installed and it's probably off one tooth. So the clock is striking at 11, missing 12, and then going to one. All right. So if you install the snail, you're off by a tooth, that'll happen. So if that's what's going on, check, your, the, check to see if your clock strikes at 12 or not. Chances are it won't be.